What up, it's Melvin7 here and today I'm back with some match reviews, uh, well some, no it's one match review, Spurs vs Manchester United, finally after 99 days of no United, we're back and in fairness it was a pretty good game, uh, I thought overall, I thought we were a bit unlucky not to win, um, but yeah I'll get back onto that in a sec, the last match review I did was all the way back in Ollie's very first game where I believe we beat Cardiff 5-1. I want to say something like that, but yeah, that's the last time I did match reviews. But yeah, I want to get back into it. I'm back on the YouTube grind. I'm back on the Twitch grind. All my links are in the description and I've got this lovely wall of shirts behind me. Um, and yeah, it took me a while to put that on, but yeah, it'll get updated. I've obviously got this uh, season's kits to go on. Kits, shirts, you know what I mean got Maguire, McTominay and Wan-Bissaka which will go on next season when I get the three new ones which will be Fernandez, hopefully Sancho and someone else, maybe Greenwood. I think Greenwood deserves it. But anyway, on to the actual match. So early on we looked really good. Uh, you know, we started off pretty well. We were creating some good opportunities, I suppose, without, you know, the actual cutting edge. And then all of a sudden from absolutely nothing, to be fair, uh, Spurs created a wonderful chance. Uh, Bergwijn absolutely rinsed Maguire, like that was Maguire's biggest mistake to be fair in a United shirt, either his biggest or his second biggest. He hasn't made too many errors, but this one was a critical one. Bergwijn absolutely rinsed him, turned him, burst through and put the ball straight at De Gea's, well, shoulder I suppose, like it's kind of, you know, not kind of centre, but it's a simple save you would think, but it bounces off De Gea's glove and goes in and um Keane's analysis at half time was probably the best uh, best thing to happen in the first half, really, if you're counting half time analysis in the first half. But yeah, I thought he was a little harsh on De Gea. Um, the bit about him not, like, if he was in the same team as De Gea, not letting him back on the, uh, the uh, bus going home, the team bus after the game, I thought it was pretty funny. But the overrated goalkeeper, I think, is a little bit harsh. Uh, he is on the decline, but from 2014 till 2018, there is no dispute De Gea was the best goalkeeper in the world. Nobody can take that away from him. But with Henderson knocking on the door, you know he's doing really well for Sheffield United. It's hard to see a, a case for De Gea, especially when he's making these errors, for him being number one next season. I think Dean Henderson deserves a chance. And, you know, if we don't give him it, some other top team will. So, you know, it's one of those tough decisions. But, yeah, I think, you know, we thank De Gea for what he's done. But... I think it's Dean Henderson's time. But anyway, De Gea did kind of redeem himself after. Again, Keane thought the save that he made straight after wasn't that good. But personally, I thought it was decent. You know, it was a decent fingertip save. Um, before the goal, actually, we had a decent chance with Rashford. Uh, Bruno with a nice little first-time cross-in. Um, it was terribly defended by Davidson Sanchez. Comes out to Rashford. And it's a good save by Lloris, to be honest. Now I kind of understand how frustrated teams were when they played De Gea in 2016. Um, yeah, if the, you know, the, the, this was the type of saves he was making every game. Lloris did it for Spurs today. And yeah, if Rashford had scored, we'd go 1-0 up. Spurs would have had to change the way they were playing. But hey-ho, Spurs went 1-0 up. Second half starts, um, and yeah, we started off really, really fast tempo, uh, put Spurs under a lot of pressure. Then, of course, after about 10, 15 minutes, Pogba comes on for the first time in months, completely changes the way we're playing. Greenwood comes on too. I think in this game, Fred, he wasn't amazing in this game, but let's not forget how amazing he's been all season. I think alongside Rashford, he's definitely there for our player of the year. And I think it's good that we have numerous option, uh, options, but yeah, I think for next game, you either drop McTominay or Fred. Pogba has to start because, yeah, he was the catalyst for the change and, you know, he's going to create things and that's what we need. Um, but yeah, he came on for Fred, as I say. I don't think Fred was too bad in this game, but, you know, it was kind of a passive role, whereas in other games, he's been pretty pivotal in how we've been going forward. But anyhow, he came off. Dan James had a poor game, but again... He was bought to be a backup and he's played practically every single game this season. So I'm not going to over criticize him because next season, especially if we get Sancho, he's not going to play more than, you know, he's not going to start more than 15 to 20 games, which is what we bought him for. But he's already started about 40 if you include all competitions. Might be a bit wrong there, but at least 30. 
Hey ho, he, he didn't have a good game, so Greenwood came on. And as I say, Pogba and Greenwood were the catalyst for the change, really. And, um, you know, Pogba played a lovely, like an unbelievable 40-yard half volley pass through to Rashford. This was after we equalised, actually. But, yeah, it's worth mentioning. But great defending from Davidson Sanchez to stop Rashford getting through. Um, Martial had a really, really good uh, shot that was saved ridiculously by Lloris again uh, when it was 1-0 to Spurs. Fingertip save again, reminiscent of old David De Gea, to be honest. Um, but yeah, we did get the equaliser thanks to some wonderful dribbling from Pogba uh, on the right-hand side and coming into the box and Dyer just clattered into him. Stonewall penalty, no dispute, it's a penalty. Fernandez takes it and scores. Uh, deserved the goal. He was our player, again, our best player today. He created a lot. He, he The thing is with Bruno, he's... He's a player that tries and, you know, when things don't work out, like three times, you know, he, he makes a first time pass, tries to get the ball through. It doesn't work. He doesn't let it get to him. He, he just does it again. And then, you know, eventually it's going to work. And it did. I know this was a penalty, but still, um, he had a brilliant uh, ball through to Martial later in the game. Um, it was lovely work from Pogba to play it to Fernandez, And it's a lovely first time through ball. And if Martial takes it on a second touch, Bang, goal, no question. This might have been when it was 1-0 actually, but anyhow, uh, yeah, Dyer got back really well. But overall, I think if that game had went on another 5 to 10 minutes, I reckon we'd have won. Um, but hey-ho, a draw. It's not the worst result. We're now on a 12 unbeaten streak. Obviously, it's kind of hard to remember, you know, three months ago prior to COVID. But hey-ho, uh, we're back now. We've got eight games left. Other than Leicester, we don't play anyone else in the... Maybe even the top half, to be honest. I know it's like the top seven, top eight. I don't think we play anyone else. Uh, Leicester on the final day, which will be pivotal. Um, I think uh, we can definitely claw the, the gap to within three points to Leicester, I think, by the end of the season. But yeah, it, it's going to be interesting. Sheffield United, Greenwood and Pogba have to start. They definitely do. Like They deserve to with the way they came on. Greenwood had a chance on the last second that just went wide. And one more chance I haven't actually mentioned was a Bruno Fernandes first time shot about 30 yards out and it just whisked just wide of the post. Um, if the crowd had been there, I would have realized uh, that, it, you know, it, it's hard realizing if the ball's gonna go in or not because there's no, obviously Sky do their, their audio choices that you can have the crowd noise, but still that's a few seconds behind sometimes. So yeah, it's hard to, to judge with the angles whether something's going to go in or not. And yeah, that did look as though it went in, but hey-ho, it didn't. We finished 1-1. Um, and yeah, Spurs are now six points off Chelsea and we're two points off Chelsea. Obviously, they play on Sunday, I believe. Uh, so we'll see. But we've got a decent run in and I'm quite confident. I reckon we can make the top four. What do you think? I'm back anyway. How do you think uh, this, this reviews went? What would you say in the comments? But anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video and yeah, Peace.